Hey guys, this is Nick from Beer and Bat Reps, and today we're going to talk about this crazy Warhammer 40k release. I'm sure you've seen it all over the internet. It was blowing up on Facebook, on Twitter, and most importantly on Twitch. Um, I don't know if you got to watch it live. I personally didn't. I was at work, but I was getting updates on um, all the Warhammer 40k Facebook pages, like Warhammer Community, throughout the day. Uh, the first thing is I'm not going to really talk about... Uh, ninth edition and uh, rule changes that have been talked about and <clears throat> everyone's kind of guessing at different things that ninth edition might be like they had that one video of, of like nine new things that's a little different about ninth edition like tanks shooting into combat things like that um, what I am going to do is talk about the uh, models themselves the first one they showed or at least that I saw was this intercessor um, with a chainsword? What a great stance! It almost reminds me of the new um, Ragnar Blackmane. Just this great uh, stance with his heavy bolt pistol forward and his chainsword. Um, everyone's kind of wondering if is it if it's going to have uh, any sort of AP in combat or not. I'm gonna guess it doesn't. Just the sheer amount of attacks this unit is going to be able to put out is ridiculous. Um, you can make them veterans for another attack. Um, armies like Blood Angels are going to have even more attacks. Space Wolves will be hitting on twos. It's going to be a good unit, and the model looks phenomenal. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to kind of go over these models in the order that I personally saw them throughout the day and give you my general thoughts on it. So, unfortunately, all the new Space Marines I showed in Ultramarines, um, people like my friend Noah are going to love it, but I like to see some of the other chapters. I really like seeing chapters that are either homebrewed or just, um, you know, one of the successor chapters. Uh, this next one here is one that everyone's kind of talking about. It has an Iron Halo, which, of course, made me think it was a captain, but then everyone talked about the stripe on his helmet, and that that signifies that he's a lieutenant. So that tells me that lieutenants are going to start getting iron halos, I guess. Maybe it's a special type of lieutenant that's more meant for combat, so needed an invul. Either way, it didn't seem like the iron halo was necessary, as the model itself also has a storm shield. And if you have a storm shield, that's a 3-up invul. So there's not really much of a point for the 4-up invul iron halo. <coughs> Excuse me. The other thing people are talking about is the pistol. There's a lot of chatter on the internet about whether or not this pistol is a Volkite blaster technology that Belisarius Call um, kind of brought into that, that whole fluff. And uh, 30K, I think, uses that technology. Um, I saw a pretty good source online say that GW typically always does glowing blue for plasma pistols. And the fact that this is kind of glowing red uh, makes me think that it's some other technology. The other thing I really like is that the pistol looks like it's able to be in the same hand as the sword. And I don't, I could be wrong, but I feel like throughout my life playing Warhammer, if you had a storm shield in one hand, you had to then choose um, your your melee weapon, like a thunder hammer. And then if you had a thunder hammer and storm shield, you could only throw grenades. But this. Definitely has the stance, and I mean, obviously, he's going to be able to shoot his pistol and use his sword while holding the storm shield, which is awesome. I just want to know their mindset um, by giving him an iron halo and a storm shield. Because <clears throat> why would you ever choose the four up invul over the three up invul? Um, the model itself is phenomenal. Um, all the primaris typically are just, the proportions are perfect. Um, his little shield on his chest is awesome. I get a real Bretonians or almost um, Imperial Knights uh, vibe from it with the checkers and the stripes. Um, I like that he has robes. I think space space marines with robes tend to look better than the ones without robes. Um, whether that's robes or wolf pelts, if you're space wolves like me, um, I just think it looks better than the basic one. Uh, Black Templars always look awesome with their classic white robes hanging down between their legs. Um, so yeah, uh, I tried to look in the background of this picture. I'm not seeing anything new. In the bottom left, you can see 
the top missiles of aggressors. Looks just sort of like a repulsor at the top and then intercessors. So then we get to this picture, which was the main big shot that everyone's kind of talked about. Um, so I'm just going to go through the whole thing. First, obviously, the artwork in the bottom left is that same exact lieutenant. He looks great. The paint job's great. Um, so they, they match the artwork perfectly. Um, it looks like in the other corner is... Uh, looks like Gulliman. Looks like Bobby G. Um, so we're going to start just uh, at the bottom. The new bikes, they look great. I think the, the bolters on the top look really good. Um, I really like the large oval bases. I get a real AOS uh, vibe from it. If you play any AOS, all the factions with large bulky cavalry use those same bases. <clears throat> you can tell those are the real big bases that like the Stormcast Eternals on the Griff Chargers use or the uh, what is it the Iron Jaw orcs that ride on huge uh, boars they use those same bases they, they just take up a good chunk of the battlefield they look great gives you lots of room um, it looks like they all also have a uh, chain sword that they're holding which is awesome so they'll have a lot of attacks they'll have good shooting they'll have high toughness they'll have high wounds i'm guessing at least three wounds a piece maybe even four three wounds a piece would feel normal because i play harlequins and their bikes have three wounds but um yeah they look great uh right above them to the right right underneath the picture of uh bobby g <clears throat> it looks like you have the new intercessor assault unit um, I'm just thinking a, a squad of 10 with, they're going to start base two attacks, three for the chainsword, four for being a space marine in the first round of combat. So you're talking about 40 attacks right there. And that at least gets them even with uh, Reavers. Now, they have the same pistol as Reavers, and if the chainsword gives them an extra attack, just like the Reaver knives, I'm kind of wondering what the purpose is. I guess so that you can have an assault-based Primaris unit that is a troop choice, but if these don't end up being a troop choice, then I don't really see a reason to not just take Reavers. Reavers can deep strike, Reavers can come off a board edge, Reavers can ignore uh, vertical distance with buildings and uh, obstacles, and Reavers are the cheapest way to get Primaris on the table. They're only 16 points a model, which point, point per model is cheaper than Intercessors. So... There's gonna be, there's gonna have to be something special about these guys. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say yeah, those chain swords are bigger than normal ones, than that they have an AP. So then in round three and on, return three and on, when you're in the assault doctrine, you'll have AP minus two, which is pretty good. Um, you know, white scars will then have two damage with each hit. You know, there's lots of different ways you could, you could run them. Um, it would be right up my alley if Impulsors could hold 10 models. But the fact that they can only hold 5, I just don't like. I don't like the squad size of 5 for Primaris. I like big bulky units. I like, the, I like more of a Primaris horde. But I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that wouldn't mind just a squad of 5 of those guys pouring out of an Impulsor um, with a character. Okay, so right in front of them we get these awesome combat True, true elite combat Primaris Marines. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say it's just Power Sword Storm Shield, but my fingers are crossed that they're all Relic Blades. If you've ever used Relic Blades, they're great. They're basically like a Strength 6 Power Fist without the minus one to hit. Um, it's a much more cost-effective, cost point-efficient way to load up your combat characters because it's so, so, so much cheaper than a Thunder Hammer. And you still get to keep it on, on twos because Relic Blade doesn't have the minus one to hit. So in my head, I'm like, I'm really hoping that they're all Relic Blade Storm Shield loadout. Because that would just be awesome. Um, either way, the models look fantastic. They look like they'll blend in perfectly with that lieutenant we saw in the last picture. Um, yeah, everyone's talking about these. I can't wait. I'm sure if you're a Space space Marine player, you're feeling the same way. Um I just can't wait to, for Noah to get some for his Ultramarines and paint them up. It's going to look amazing, especially with Calgar or Tigerius as like a bodyguard. Right above them looks like a brand new chaplain. Um, 
Some, someone asked me today if I thought it looked like he's in Gravis armor. His helmet doesn't look quite right, but Chaplin's helmets always look a little different. They have that skull motif. Um, so I don't think it's Gravis armor. He does look a little bulky, but so do the guys right in front of him with the shields. Um, he's got kind of a classic stance. Um, if you know all the old Space Marine models, there's a Chaplin model holding his Crozius up like that, and then his other hand down at his side is a Power Fist. It may be the opposite. It may be Power Fist in the air and the Crozius at his side. Either way, it looks like that same stance, kind of the Emperor's Champion from the Black Templar stance. It's not my favorite, but if you look directly above him to the right, there's the Chaplin that I cannot wait for. He's holding some kind of lantern. He looks straight out of Age of Sigmar. He looks like a Stormcast Eternal. Um, and I mean that in a good way. He looks great. And that sword, that gigantic broadsword that he has resting on his shoulder, that better have some awesome rules. At the very least, it better be a relic blade. His stance with that sword on his shoulder, and the sword is so <laughs> overly large, gives me a real uh, cloud from Final Fantasy VII vibe. And it is just great. I cannot, I'm going to get that model even just to convert it and just have fun with it. That model looks great. Um, and then directly next to him is, in my opinion, the biggest deal of this whole picture. Those appear to be Devastators with LAS cannons that are underslung LAS cannons. Kind of like, I think the model's in 30K or maybe one, maybe it's a Forge World kit, but they have underslung LAS cannons like that. These look like Primaris Devastators and that's awesome. I mean, that's that's going to be great in every army, basically, if you can take just four LAS cannons. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I love suppressors in the backfield. I love Hellblasters with the flat two. But LAS cannons with that extra strength and that uh, D6 damage is just so good. Uh, one last thing in front of that unit. Um, you got a new Ancient, it appears. And uh, he has a banner just straight out of Age of Sigmar. That looks like an exact one that the Stormcast Eternals use. Anyway, they look great. Moving on to this this slide. Um, this looks like the new weapon for the Silent King. It looks awesome. I mean, a big double-bladed spear halberd, it looks like. It kind of reminds me of Catacros um, from Age of Sigmar, his weapon. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you can just see the fine detail on everything. On the pillar next to it, um, the paint job on that green blade is great. GW did a good job there. Um, to be honest, I know some local people at some of the tournaments I go to that play Necrons that'll make it look even better. Um, I can't wait to see some of these new Necron models with the kind of paint jobs that I know our local community can, can pump out. Um, there's a guy that goes to our local tournaments uh, here in Indiana where, where I uh, live and his Necrons win best painted every time. I mean, they just look so good. Uh, so I can't wait to see what he does with, with these new models. Uh, so there's the weapon. If you know about this silent King release, uh, they haven't shown the whole model together. Um, so they're just showing little glimpses of pictures kind of chopped up. I just took my two favorite pictures of the, uh, little teaser and uh that's this one and then the next one which is just some of the best sculpting i've ever seen gw do so i can't wait for that one i'm trying to figure out what's in the background here it's real blurry i assume it's just the back of his throne um but yeah i mean definitely put in the comments what you think is going on in the background there i know this model is going to be a giant kind of throne with stair steps is what i'm guessing um but then here we go if you've watched my battle reports, you know that my personal Necron collection is Satan based, and this just looks so good. This is clearly, I, I could be wrong, I'm not too up on the lore um, for the Silent King, but this looks like a trapped Necron Satan shard um, that maybe is powering the Silent King, or maybe that is the Silent King himself. I'm sorry for my ignorance. Um, if you know his story, and can sum it up real quick, just put it in the comments so that I can uh, learn more about this lore in a fast way. <laughs> As someone with all the armies, I really don't have time to delve into every single 
uh, army. I have too much painting and filming to do. <laughs> but back to this model, it looks phenomenal. Um, from the gym right in the middle of his chest to the abs to his neck and then the head and face. Um, I don't know if you've seen the movie Prometheus, but in Prometheus, the aliens, the creators, they are these giant, like eight foot tall, bald, super pale humanoid uh, figures. And I get a real Prometheus vibe from this guy. His eyes and mouth are really giving me the vibe from those guys from Prometheus. Um, so if you know my Necron army, you know that I do a I do real, real dark black, and then the satan are real, real bright yellow. So um, I can't wait to get my hands on this. I'm just going to go <laughs> super starburst yellow um, with all the little uh, ink in the recesses. It's going to look great. Um, and, it, you know, I love my satan. I, I'm a satan heavy uh, force. I'm hoping the rules have something to do with this satan that's trapped um, so that I can kind of fit it in my satan army uh fluff wise if he just has it as a prisoner that also kind of goes with my satan army because he's just the leader and they're all his uh shard slaves um so yeah uh put in the comments what you think about this i think it's some of the best uh sculpting i've ever seen i wish that he had arms <laughs> but if you see on his on his left it's like eating into his ribs. Like he's missing a big chunk of his body. And that power is just being like siphoned into his throne. The Silent King's throne maybe to power it. Um, yeah, it's it's great. I cannot wait till they show the whole model. You know, my bank account is worried that it's going to be a $120 model. But um, man, there's just so much more Necrons to come. Uh all the complaining for all these years in the comment section from Xenos players saying that Xenos don't get any love. Man, Necrons are about to have a huge release. Um, so yeah, I put this picture in here because I think Bella Lost Souls talked about it a little bit too. Um, this is Catacros from uh, Age of Sigmar, from the, uh, the Bone Reapers army. It's a diorama, and you have to fight through each layer of his bodyguards before you can fight him. And uh, I know some people are worried that the Silent King is going to be a similar model. Just a giant base with a huge throne and steps and uh, guardians that are on either side of him. I'd say that's probably accurate. I'd say that is going to be what we're dealing with because 40K has already done that once with the new uh, Sisters release. They have that huge diorama of the... I forget the name of the saint. It's the, it's the deceased saint and they're carrying her... Uh, coffin like at her funeral um, and it looks phenomenal and this this model from Age of Sigmar looks phenomenal and I'm sure you know they just have the best sculptors on it and I think maybe one reason they put so much detail into these dioramas is to make it harder for 3D printers <laughs> to steal it and then we get to the new Necron Warriors um, let me know what you guys think uh, I think they look so similar to the other Necron Warriors. Uh, the main thing is they got rid of the, in my opinion, awful green plastic rods that they've had for years. For, I mean, 15 years? That's my guess. Um, honestly, I always ran straight Immortals because I always liked Immortals more, mainly because of their model. I thought they looked, they just had much, much better models. Um, these are looking a little better. The guns look a lot better. They're still real skinny, you know, Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger looking uh, Necron Warriors. But um, I could see why there's probably a lot of people that are going to be really excited about this. Um, I, for one, don't have any Necron Warriors, so maybe this will get me to buy some. But I'll probably still stick with... Uh, I'll probably still stick with the... Uh, uh, immortals because better save and the minimum unit size, size is cheaper. I don't see them changing anything. I a lot of the rumors I've heard for ninth is that the war scrolls are going to stay the same. Um, obviously these guys will get a little bit updated because they're holding new guns. Um, so the one that's double barreled definitely looks like the Goss Flare from I think it's the Goss Flare that the Immortals have. 
That's the strength five minus two AP rapid fire 24 inch gun, um, which to me is like one of the best guns any troop in the game can hold. I just love the idea that your basic troops have strength five minus two AP uh, guns. Um, the other one is longer. I don't know if that's just the basic, um, that's their new version of the basic Goss weapon that warriors have. Um, and maybe you have, you, well, obviously you have the choice of either one now. Um, but yeah, I guess that could be a way to get way, way more of the uh, Strength 5 AP minus 2 Rapid Fire uh, Goss Flares on, on the table. If you can give all your 20 packs of Warriors that gun, it's going to make a much nastier shooting phase if you're going that route, if you're doing the Horde, horde Neck Rounds, the Walking Dead as I call it. Um, but yeah, uh, that's kind of the main the main releases I saw from the Necrons. This next one coming up uh, definitely piqued my interest because um, I like elite armies with bigger, chunkier models. And um, this next one's almost like an ogre-sized, ogren-sized uh, Necron. And I don't know if it's a character or if it's a new unit. Um, here he is. So he's got the legs of a spider. <laughs> He's got one long claw, and what I love is that his next two arms have obviously maybe two different guns, but one of the guns has a giant blade on it. And I know Necrons aren't really made for combat, but I like armies that are a little weird. So I like to run Novoke with my Necrons, and... Um, if you don't know Novoke, it's the same thing as Crest from Imperial Knights. Uh, Novoke is the first round of combat, whether you charge or or get charged, or I think if you heroically intervene, um, you reroll all misses in combat. So, you know, great for some armies, not necessarily the greatest thing for Necrons, but with my Flayed Ones and my character, my Destroyer Lord character that I like to buff up for combat, um, yeah, I like it. I run Navoke. I send them in. I used to have some uh, wraiths that were Navoke that would reroll all their misses. That was pretty nasty. I, I've actually gotten rid of those so I could go pure uh, Satan with all my points. <laughs> but um, yeah, if this is a new like line breaker type unit, these guys look tough. Looks like they're going to have strong shooting and fairly strong combat because I mean that base alone. If I had to guess, I'd say that base is 50 millimeter, which is the Centurion base. And the Centurion base, uh, you know, it's it's pretty good size. So this guy could easily be the size of like, a, I don't know, like a Trogoth in AOS. He could be a, a, that similar size, that mid-size, ogre-size model. Um, yeah, uh, if there was a release that said what these guys are called today, I missed it. <laughs> um, all I've seen is this picture and GW's little funny quotes they do about things. I did not see the name of this unit or character anywhere. Um, behind him in the picture, I see regular warriors. I see a destroyer up in the top right. Bottom left, I'm not seeing... I can't tell what that is in the bottom left, but in the top left, it's a guy with a really cool, like, beatnik, <laughs> like, uh, goatee on his chin and one eye. Um, I think it's the character that has the legs like this, the character they just released images of um, online, what was that, a week ago? It looks like him. Um, but yeah, I'm... I'm probably more excited about this than any of the other Necrons that they've showed uh, just because I like combat and I like the short-ranged, high-power Necron guns. Um, yeah. So next we have the similar Fog of War style <laughs> release picture where they want to show us the cool new models, but they want to keep it as hard to see as possible, of course. So in the middle and to the right, it looks like the new Warriors that they showed. On the very, well, yeah, on the right, um, above those warriors, it looks like scarabs. They don't look much different. Um, but then right above the scarabs is some kind of character, uh, or at least single model. He's small and almost has like a snake body. 
I could be wrong. It's really hard to see. Um, if anyone has a sharper picture, uh, post a link to it in the comments if you're able to. I'd love to take a closer look at that. Now behind that is what people have been talking about. It's, uh, I don't even know what to say. It has a, it really has a War of the Worlds uh, look to it. It's super tall. It does appear to have some kind of spider, triox stalker type legs. Um, but I mean, its head looks like the body of a destroyer. So I don't know if it's, they wouldn't have a kit bash in a picture like this. They wouldn't have a conversion, I don't think. But yeah, I don't even know where to begin with that. I can't see any guns. I don't really see any appendages other than the legs. Um, so that's just a total, total question mark. I have no idea, guys. Uh, your guess is as good as mine, and I'd love to hear it. Uh, if you've w looked at any of my videos before, you know that I answer every every single comment. So if you want to talk about this, uh, let me know what you think you see there. Uh, right in front of that model, though, is a unit of four models uh or i guess two are just the back of one unit of warriors but there's two right there right ne uh to the left of that crazy model i was just describing that are nice and small i'm not really sure what i'm looking at there behind them though there appears to be a new combat unit uh with two big like cleavers in each hand or a big cleaver in each hand glowing green i don't know if these are the new pariahs or some sort of new combat unit and then directly behind them looks like that large model we were just looking at so um, yeah guys the new Necrons it seems like other than just remaking the Warriors and some strange new ones that's now two different units they've showed that clearly are meant for combat have huge giant blades and then if you remember the, the picture of the new Space Marines, most of that was combat as well. So I'm thinking Ninth Edition is there, there's going to be some bonuses for combat units, I'm pretty sure. Because why would they push combat units so hard when we all know 8th Edition combat armies really struggle? I personally love combat armies. It's my favorite style of Warhammer. Um, I don't mind shooting on my way there. I don't mind having backfield units that provide cover fire for my units that are charging up the field. But um, arguably my best army, the Admech, are so static that I get bored using them. So I love armies that race across the table, have guns in their hand that they can use, but their main goal is to get into combat and tear stuff up. That's my favorite style. Um, even my Satan Necrons now... Uh, Yes, they have all their Necron powers, but I give the Transcendent Satan, all three of them, the three up Invul because I want to get stuck in. I want to fight. So, um, seeing all these new Necron units that seem to be combat oriented makes me very happy. I can't wait. It's, you know, if, if they just came out with a bunch more guns and floating gun platforms and Triax Spider type things with more guns, I would have never bought it. To be honest, I, I'm pretty set with my Necrons, but if they come out with some new Satan or that uh, Silent King has that huge, awesome Satan on its throne, um, you know, I'll be, I'll be buying that in a heartbeat. So that's kind of where I am with the Necrons. Uh, this next picture uh, was not actually a release. Uh, I think this was a leak that someone put up on Reddit. Um, and then it got passed around the internet. It's even grainier. It's even harder to see. But let, let's take a closer look at it. Okay, so this one at least has numbers. And it kind of tells you what you're looking at. Which is super nice of the people that did that. So we'll just go uh, in order. So number one, it says Destroyer. It's really grainy. It's in the bottom left corner. But it appears that the Destroyers are no longer on plastic uh, flyer bases. Which... I hate plastic flyer bases. As a Harlequins player with 18 bikes and all the transports, I really wish they had some unique way to have it built onto a normal base. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to see that. Makes them really low to the ground, it looks like. So maybe easier to hide behind line of sight. Um, but still nice and bulky. Looks like he's hovering just right above the base, which is pretty cool. Kind of like the, the Repulsor has a really, really small uh, flight stand that just makes him 
just barely above the base, which is cool. Uh, so we go to number two. Number two is right in the middle. It's kind of string, string across the middle. Um, it says new warriors. We've seen those. We know they look great. So we'll move right on. Number three next to there says Praetorians. They have some kind of staff. I don't know if these are new guys or if these are the older ones. Um, yeah, it's super grainy, so it's hard to tell, but they, they could be new models. Uh, we go to four, and it's the Cryptek. And uh, it looks like it might just be the new, new. I don't want to say new. The one that's maybe a year or two old that, that came in the set with the Imperial Knights. Um, it was a flyer. Uh, it had the cloak, the Canopsic cloak. So then we go to five, and it just says new unit. So no one's really sure what that is. It looks tall. It looks imposing. Um, it's not very wide or thick, but it is very tall and lanky. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. I definitely want to see what that is. Um, we go to six. This is new showcase unit. Um, where's six at? Yeah, so that's the, that's the taller. It's right in the middle. That's the one. That's the taller, like, ogre-sized one that we already looked at earlier. Uh, so then we go to seven. And seven is to the far left. And it says new heavy with doomsday cannon. So if you look at the top, it definitely is a Doomsday Cannon. It's the same one you see on, uh, I think the one of the Flyers has one. Um, and it just appears to be some kind of creepy, almost like drone that's floating above its base with little grabber arms in front of it. It's almost like the spindle drones from the, uh, oh, what is it? It's not Silver Tower, the 40K version. Um, it looks like one of those, but with a destroyer. Or not destroyer, doomsday cannon on top. Pretty cool. I'm sure the all the Necron players out there that um, are mid range and long range shooting based forces will love it. Just to get more doomsday cannons on the table is always good. We go to number eight, and it's the new monolith, and it looks great. I think what they did with it looks so much better. I mean, you still get basically what a normal monolith used to look like, but it looks like there's some energy crackling right in the middle, right at the entrance which looks awesome. And then the top with the uh, what's it, like glowing orb right in the middle um, with the uh, like Stargate looking <laughs> uh, circles around it looks so much better than the old uh, crystal on top. Now, if you still have the old one and you like it, no reason to buy this new one because it looks similar enough. It's just like an updated version. Um, but maybe it'll have new rules stronger attacks who knows um but all in all i really really like that one um so then we go to eight or no that was eight so now we go to nine it's the triox stalker right next to it um nice of him to label that but now that i see it yeah it's definitely the triox stalker so then right next to that number 10 this is the one i'm looking at the most i think i've already explained why i am a satan player when it comes to necrons i'm all about it I have two of the Tesseract Volts. I have both names Satan. I have multiples of the Transcendent. This to me looks like a new Satan. And it looks like it's finally finally getting their due. It looks like it's like the size of a Bloodthirster. It looks like a nice big centerpiece character monster that hopefully kicks ass in combat and throws spells around. Um, very, very excited about that one. Um, I, who knows what it is? It just could be an, a new Satan completely, or they could have redone and finally made a transcendent Satan model. I could see that being the case since they never actually had one on foot. You had to kind of use it from the Tesseract Volt uh, uh, box set, which, you know, isn't too hard. You just pull them off and put them on a little flyer base. But then we finally get to number 11, the Silent King Throne. So you can see two floating pillars right next to his staircase. On the staircase itself, I can't tell if right where the number 11 is, if that's the Silent King and he's wearing like big flowing robes that are going down over the stairs and he's like pointing forward. And then above him, behind him, is the imprisoned Satan that's like powering the whole thing. Or if there isn't anyone standing there and the Satan up there is actually the Silent King. I just don't know enough about the lore 
Um, I mean, I saw the little teaser a week or two ago uh, where it definitely didn't seem like his tan. It seemed like a nice bulky uh, Necron guy that was good at fighting. So I'm hoping that's him floating around on his throne. Looks pretty cool. And then uh, 12 up in the top left is just a Doom Scythe. We all know it. We all love it. The the croissant, the, you know, pastry chef <laughs> from Tabletop Tactics, you know, all about it. Um, so, yeah, guys, this is pretty huge release. I mean, we're not even getting into the all the possibilities of 9th edition and rules updates, rule changes, how they're redoing the terrain and cover mechanic from the ground up. There's a lot to talk about, uh, but today I just want to kind of go over the pictures that were either leaked or um, put out on purpose by GW. Um, this whole showing us new units, but with this like fog of war over it, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to think about that. Um, it's a little annoying, but uh, you know you can't just give us everything all at once. So it makes it nice for people to sit and gossip and try to figure out what they're looking at. And then they did give us some very, very high quality things. So this has been Nick from Beer and Bat Reps. Please comment below. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, guys. Like, subscribe. Uh, we got a battle report coming up. See you later.